You had me completely f***ed up with the situation. You called me toxic the first time you met me. I can totally see Jordan being the toxic friend. What? Toxic? You judged me the first time you met me. Judge me you the Googled first time her you the first time. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Brooke Ashley, and today we are here to discuss Summer House Martha's Vineyard season two, episode four, and hands down the most explosive episode so far. And Miss Jordan, I hope that you are seated because the way I'm about to wear you out, Miss Mamas, this attitude, you have got to get it in check. And I'm just surprised that everybody allows you to carry on the way you do. And it's no shade, Jordan, but you're low key coming across as insufferable and miserable. You have this attitude where it's like, misery loves company. If you're not happy, then nobody else in this house can be happy and enjoy their time on the island. But Miss Girl, the way I would have checked you at that table, because you tried it. How do you snap at Alex when he was just trying to comfort you and make sure that you were okay? That was completely uncalled for and again you need to work on your tone i don't understand why you feel like it's okay for you to just snap at people because you feel like it and the way y'all are always crying and damn near every single dinner scene i'm like are you guys having fun because if i were there i would have left y'all a long time ago i would have been eating by myself and then gone off to the bar and the club by myself because i don't need to be bogged down with people who are always crying about something but y'all let me not jump ahead let's just jump right on into it because as you guys can see i have a lot to say and we don't have a minute to spare now the first seven eight minutes of this episode were extremely chaotic because everybody's back in the house from the club and we see the continuation of the argument between Summer and Jordan. So Summer has stormed into the house, she's sobbing, and what really had me screaming, we flip to Shanice and Nick on the couch and they're both unbothered eating chips. Now I said, Shanice and Nick, I would've been right there with you because I love a good chip. I think Shanice was snacking on some sour cream and cheddar, one of my favorites. Now when it comes to chips, I love that sour cream and onion, and you can never go wrong with some Cheetos or some honey barbecue, all right? But I would've been right there on that couch enjoying my chips and dip. <laughs> but anyhow, Summer is hysterically crying. She says in her confessional that during dinner, she had asked Jordan to talk to her with some respect. And then in the car, Jordan did it again. So she feels like I should not have to ask my friend to be respectful. And I do agree with that, although Summer, I did clock how standoffish you were when I met you at the Summer House premiere party a few weeks ago, all right? But I'm going to be fair and say that I agree. You should not have to beg for respect from a friend. That should be a given. Jordan speaks to you very poorly and that needs to be nipped in the bud like yesterday. Summer goes on to say that Jordan is defensive all the time and Jordan definitely is. That's the perfect word for her. Very defensive. She is very argumentative. Always ready to fight. She's abrasive. Yeah, it's a lot. Jordan, again, I hope that you are watching the season play out and you're taking notes on how to better yourself. And I don't know if you're already in therapy, but if you're not, I definitely would suggest some therapy. It seems like you have a lot to unpack. And again, it's no shade because we all have our issues. We all have our things. But I think that you would definitely benefit from talking to somebody because it seems like you're just always on edge. You're always upset about something. And that's just not a good way to be. You can't always be in a bad mood. Things can't always be upsetting. You have to be happy sometime. Now, mind you, Preston, Alex, and Jordan are still in the car, and Preston is explaining to Jordan why Summer is so upset. And you could tell that it wasn't clicking for Jordan. And I'm like, girl, just acknowledge that you have a nasty tone and you need to work on that. But she's just sitting there acting like she has no idea what Preston's trying to tell her. Now, how much did y'all drink? Because the way everybody was in this house crying and carrying on, we see a short scene of Noelle sobbing. She wants to call her mom because she's upset that Alex rejected her. I said, oh my gosh. Now you flip back to Summer. Summer is still sobbing. You have Amir trying to calm her down. He's like, take a few deep breaths. Here's some water. I said, Lord, how much did y'all drink? So now at this point, we see Summer, Amir, Jasmine, and Shanice up in, I think it was either Jasmine's room or Summer's room, I don't know. 
but they're all in somebody's bedroom and Summer is still venting about Jordan. So she's going on to say that she's been supportive of Jordan. She was holding her while Jordan was crying earlier in the day. And obviously she's referencing in the last episode before they went out, Jordan was crying about having alopecia and losing all of her hair. So that's what Summer is referencing. So now Preston, Jordan, and Alex are back in the house and we see Shanice come down and she tells Preston and Jordan what Summer was saying to them upstairs a few minutes ago and how Summer was saying that she was there for Jordan when Jordan was crying earlier that day. So you have Jordan break down in tears. She's upset now because she feels like Summer has violated her trust by sharing these details with Shanice. Now, Jordan, in all fairness, Summer did not divulge any personal details. All she said was, I was holding her when she cried earlier. It wasn't like she said, oh, I held her because she was crying about losing her hair. She did not give any intimate details. She just said, I was there for her when she was upset earlier on. That's it. I don't feel like Summer violated your trust. I just feel like you enjoy being angry and upset. So now you want to blame Summer for another thing and take your anger out on her even more. That's what it felt like. And then at one point we see Jordan crying on the floor while she's talking to Nick and Preston about her alopecia. And she's like, I'm losing my hair. And she's just sobbing. So now you have Jordan saying that Summer has weaponized her vulnerability. And I'm just thinking, Jordan, I don't see it that way. I feel like your anger about what you're going through is causing you to lash out and blow things out of proportion. Because again, Summer did not reveal any details about your hair loss. She only said, I'm just upset because I was there for her earlier when she was crying. That's it. That's all. Unless production cut something out, Summer did not say anything more about what you were crying about. But they finally go to sleep. I said, thank you, Jesus. Won't he do it? Because again, the first eight minutes of this episode were chaotic. So now it's the next morning and we see half of the group sleeping. And now we see Alex up early because he wants to go to church. So he's waking everybody up like, hey guys, do you want to go to church? He goes into Noelle's room and mind you, Summer is staying in Noelle's room this time because her and Jordan are on the out and we all know that Noelle got the room with two beds. So he opens up the door and he's like, hey, do you guys want to go to church? Noelle is sleeping. Summer was half awake, half asleep and she's just like, oh, well, what time? And Alex is like, well, you have to get up now. So he closes the door and Summer goes right back to sleep. Now, I didn't like how they were all trying to play him later on. Like he didn't ask them to go to church. He did and you guys were asleep and you missed the service. It is what it is. Stop trying to blame somebody else. Y'all were hung over and it's okay. Try again next time. There will be another service. <laughs> but I thought it was funny because Alex Shanice Nick and Jasmine were the only ones ready for church. And then we see them at service. And I did think it was interesting to learn that Alex comes from four generations of Pentecostal preachers. So now we flip back to everybody else at the house and Summer and Preston are having a debrief about what went down last night. So Summer wants Preston's perspective on what happened between her and Jordan. And Preston says, well, Jordan feels like you used her autoimmune disorder against her. And Summer was so confused. She was like, wait, I didn't use anything against her. How could she feel that way? So Preston goes on to say, well, it was because Shanice came down and told us what happened. And it seemed like Shanice knew all these details. And I'm like, again, all Summer said was, I was there for Jordan when she was crying earlier that day. That's all. She did not say anything about Jordan's alopecia or any of that. So this is a reach. You could tell that Preston is getting tired of always being in the middle of these arguments. So he says, look, girl, you need to go and find Jordan later on and have a conversation with her. That's between y'all two. But now we see Summer and Noelle go out to the pool and they're talking about last night. Summer's asking Noelle about the conversation that went down between her and Alex. And Noelle's just like, look, girl, it ended there at the bar. Again, this is why women should not be out here shooting their shots. If a man likes you, if a man wants you, he will come and get you. You never have to ask, oh, do you like me? You'll know. 
If you're confused, that means he doesn't like you. I felt so bad when you started crying and you brought up how this triggered emotions about your dad not being in your life. I felt really bad for you. And I said, please do not waste all your tears on Alex. And Summer, let me get on you quickly because you low key set your friend up for failure telling her to have a talk with Alex in the first place when y'all were at the club. So I just said, you're trying to comfort her now, but you're shady for giving her bad advice because she still has feelings for Alex and you really think that she wants you and Alex to hook up and succeed? No. So she said, girl, go out there, make a fool of yourself too. Shoot your shot with him. So now you guys are both broken hearted over the same guy. But Noelle is a sweetheart. I like her a lot. She's definitely my favorite. And I really did feel bad to see her so distraught about Alex. And then when they flipped to her in her room and she was still crying and talking to her mom on the phone and even her mom said, Noelle, stop all that crying. Girl, pick your head up. It's okay. Life goes on. Don't feel embarrassed. It's going to be fine. And I just said, there is nothing like a mother's love and a mother's advice because I said, yeah, girl, you cried enough about Alex. Enough is enough. Don't give him any more of your tears. You shot your shot. The ball did not go in the net. It is what it is. A year from now, nobody's going to even be talking about this or mentioning this, okay? So do not feel embarrassed. It happens. You did it. Don't do it again, but you're just fine, all right? Everybody has embarrassing moments. It's not the end of the world. You're going to be okay, I promise you. So now we see Bria in the kitchen and she's making some chicken. I think she was making stuffed chicken with some potatoes. You already know that my mouth was watering. They're having soul food Sunday. So now Bria brings up the whole Mariah situation. She's still upset at finding out about Jasmine booking Mariah's ticket. Now I said, Bria, you're another one who is extremely exhausting and insufferable. And let's play the tapes back because you were on Kempire's channel last year and you said that you and Mariah were good. You guys had talked it out and everything was fine. So all this carrying on now about, oh, I just, I'm really upset that Mariah's gonna come and I don't feel comfortable and I'm just still angry. You're full of it and you're doing this for a storyline and for some attention. Did production put you up to this? Because I'm just not understanding how you're saying that you guys are fine, but now you're saying, oh, well, I'm still upset about this. I'm bothered. Girl, shut up. Summer put her hands on you last season and you guys are still out here having a key, going out. You guys are still friends and she's still in this house on the show full time. So now everybody's getting ready for the soul food dinner and we see Jordan and Summer go off to another room Room to talk about their argument from last night. So Summer shares in her confessional that she has a lot going on in her personal life. She's trying to find out who her dad is. Then we find out that her grandmother has to get a surgery. So there's a lot going on. And this argument between her and Jordan is adding extra stress. So Jordan starts off the conversation and I already knew where this was about to go. Jordan, to say that you are insufferable would be an understatement. You are always the victim in every single situation, my God. Jordan starts it off by saying that she wants to understand what happened how did a private moment get shared and how she never expected Summer to do this to her and she feels like it was a violation. Again, Jordan, Summer did not reveal any information about your hair loss. All she said was, I comforted Jordan earlier that day when she was crying. That's it, that's all. So you're really reaching saying that she shared and divulged personal info when she did not. Again, unless production cut something out that we didn't see, from what I saw, all Summer said was, I had her back and I was there for her when she was sad. That's it. Now here's where I really lost it. Summer says to Jordan, well, let's backtrack because throughout the night, your tone of voice was very nasty, very belittling. Instead of Jordan apologizing right then and there, Jordan is just staring at Summer like Summer said absolutely nothing. Summer, you need to have more of a backbone because we would not have continued that conversation until Jordan had acknowledged that her tone was rude and she apologized. 
And that is why Jordan continues to talk to y'all like she does not have any sense because y'all don't check her. There's no way that Jordan would have sat there with that smug look on her face like I didn't say anything. And Jordan, the way you're always whining about your feelings and how you feel hurt, the fact that you couldn't even say to your friend, you know what girl, you're right, I'm sorry. That says a lot. And then you have the audacity to bring it back to yourself and talk about how friendship should be a safe space. Girl, how is it a safe space when you're dogging people out with your tone of voice? You don't even speak to your friends nicely, but yet friendship is supposed to be a two-way street and a safe space. Summer, I would have walked out that room when she kept going on about how she doesn't know if she can trust you and she feels violated. I would said, okay, girl, if you feel that way, then we don't need to be friends anymore. It's a wrap. You can't even take ownership and apologize to me, but now I have to say sorry to you. Yo, like I said, I had so many emotions watching this episode. <laughs> and Jordan, feel free to come on the channel. I would love to have you because I am dying to know has anybody ever gotten on you about your tone? Did you eventually apologize to Summer? Like, I need to know this. And you couldn't even own up when Summer said, sometimes it feels like you're just so angry. And all you said was, okay. And I'm like, you don't want to work on that? That's all right to always just be in a bad mood all the time? Lashing out at folks for no reason because you're pissed off about something? Jordan, if there's a season three, I hope you come back a changed woman. Because again, girl, this attitude is not going to work. So they're all sitting down for dinner and the dinner looked great. I thought it was funny that Amir had made Philly cheesesteaks, but he forgot the cheese. I was just like, how do you forget the cheese? <laughs> but my mouth was still watering. They had chicken, corn, mac and cheese, braised short ribs. I saw, oh, my stomach is grumbling now. <laughs> Now everybody's having fun around the table, except for Jordan. She's pouting, she's quiet, not saying a whole lot. And Alex makes a note that Jordan is not really engaging and that she's quiet and seems to be sad about something. So now we jump to the next day and they're all getting ready because Bria is going to be hosting Bria Cella in the backyard. She's hired two chefs. She has a popcorn machine, a party tent, decorations like it's a whole big to do now i love the idea but i wish that you guys would invite some more people just to make it a bit more fun spice it up a bit because i mentioned in the last recap that on the original summer house when they have parties at the house they always have a boatload of people so i wish that you guys have more people at your events because you know you guys are cool and all but it does get a bit stale just watching you guys all the time 24 7 at your parties and events and dinners give us some new faces that's why it was cool when Shanice had the pool party she had some other people come so now they're all outside and Bria comes out with two alpacas the shade was real because Summer said I mean this is cute and all but this feels like Coachella after everybody has left <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, this Bria Celli event fell a bit flat to me. Not a whole lot went on. They could have kept this. Bria, you tried, I guess. It was a cute idea in theory, but it was a bit boring. But we do see everybody question Bria about Simon. They're like, oh, when is Simon coming? Isn't he coming next week? And you have Bria getting upset. And I'm like, why are you getting angry? They're only asking you a simple question. Is Simon coming? Why is that anything to be upset about? So she's like, I don't want to talk about it. I'm like, okay, girl. Again, Bria and Jordan, two sides of the same coin, both exhausting and insufferable. And Bria, you sounded quite silly saying that you're a very private person and they should respect that. You're so private, but you signed up to be on reality TV. But I don't know why you're so defensive about a simple question of whether or not Simon is coming to Martha's Vineyard. But I guess Bria was in a really nasty mood because earlier in the episode, we see her on the phone with Simon and he's talking about plane tickets to Martha's Vineyard are super expensive and they got into a spat about that. 
So I think maybe she was just upset that they were asking her about Simon because she was annoyed about him complaining about the price of the tickets. I don't know. But either way, girl, nobody cares that much about whether Simon is coming or not, okay? It's nothing for you to be upset about. Now, even though Bria hired two chefs and they had food for Bria Chella, we see them getting ready to go out for dinner. So it was really sweet to see Noelle in Jordan's room and she's doing Jordan's hair. And I thought it was really nice when she asked her, how are you feeling? And Jordan said, I feel self-conscious. And Noelle was like, girl, it's all right. Just fake it till you make it. And I hope that that moment showed that more people are for Jordan than against her. And it does not always have to be her against everybody. That people actually do want to help you. And I wish that she knew that. But again, that was a very touching moment and... I thought it was very sweet that Noelle was in Jordan's room to help her out with her hair. So they're all at the restaurant and the restaurant is lit. They're all seated. They order their food. Everybody's having fun, talking. And Alex notices again that Jordan seems a bit off. She's not her usual self. And he makes mention of it that she's a bit too quiet. Alex, I know that your heart was in the right place, but had you known that Jordan was about to snap the way she did, I know you probably would not have said anything. But Alex says, I just want to point out that Jordan seems a bit quiet. I just want to check in. How are you? And mind you, Alex and Jordan are on opposite sides of the table. So he's yelling across for everybody to hear. So he goes on to say that Jordan has a very heavy presence in the group and in the house and her voice holds a lot of weight and he just wants to make sure that she's okay because she's been unusually quiet. When Jordan paused, I let out the deepest sigh because I said, this girl is about to give us in all my life, I had to fight monologue and I already know that she's going to wear me out. And that she did. She starts it off by saying that she's faced a lot of loss in her life and she's been responsible for a lot of people's lives and how she has more responsibility than most 31 year olds that she knows. I just said, oh my gosh. So Jordan goes on to say that she just wants to experience things while her dad is still there. And even though he's not sick, she thinks about time a lot because when she was 17, her mom passed. Now she had told us that in the first season. And again, my heart goes out to Jordan. I lost a parent. I lost my dad, you guys know. But you cannot live in grief. You have got to enjoy your life while you are still living it. You cannot carry that burden of loss around 24 seven. That's not healthy for anybody. And Jordan, I'm not saying this to be mean, but you, tend to drag the group's morale down. Everybody's trying to have a nice dinner and just enjoy their time on this vacation. It can't always be about what you've dealt with. And I say this with love. I'm talking to me when I say this. Everybody has a story. Everybody has dealt with some trauma. You are not the only one who has dealt with hard things and you act as if nobody else can understand what you've gone through. Everybody can relate on some level. And I just felt like it wasn't right for you to emotionally dump on the table. All she had to say was, you know what? I'm a little bit down. Me and Summer had gotten into it, but you know, I'll be fine. But to go into your life story, I, it just wasn't fair to me. And I really feel like Jordan dominates a lot of the group's conversations about her issues. And that's not fair. It can't always be about you. And maybe I might get some heat for this in the comments, but I have to be honest and give you guys my real opinion. I don't think it's right that Jordan weaponizes her pain and her trauma and dumps it out on everybody else. So now Jordan goes on to say that she's losing her hair and as a black woman, that's our currency. And then she brings up how she's still single. And I just said, again, I'm sorry to hear that you're dealing with this, Jordan, but there's a time and a place and you just can't dominate the conversation with your problems when you guys are out in a group trying to have a good night. I try to be very considerate. If I'm going through something, 
I will not be around people. My misery does not enjoy company. If I have to isolate, I will do that. But I refuse to be in a group setting and dominate the conversation and talk about my problems and my issues. That's what a therapist is for in my humble opinion. So it's super tense at the table. Everybody's just like, okay, well, what now? So Amir cuts in and he's like, Jordan, I don't want you to think that you can't count on any of us at this table. We're here for you. She's sobbing at this point. Preston gives her a big hug. And now Alex jumps back in and he says, Jordan, I understand you better and on a deeper level in one dinner more than I did last summer. Child, why did he say that? Because the way Jordan went off, I said, oh my gosh, you can't say anything to Jordan without her getting offended. Jordan is exhausting. She always feels slighted. So Jordan snaps and she's like, no, you don't. That's not true because you had my friend effed up last year. And the friend that she's talking about is Shanice. So Jordan goes on this rant about how Alex had her entirely messed up and she was about to kick his ass. And I said, hold on for a minute. Jordan is very off-putting and it's just weird to hear you talk about fighting men. You did it when you got in Phil's face last season and now you're doing it again. So now Jordan goes down the laundry list of why she's angry at Alex. She says that he called her toxic last summer. He Googled Shanice. I'm like, wait, we're bringing that back up? I thought we left that in season one. Why are we bringing up old issues in season two? Now we all know about the article about Shanice being accused of stalking her ex. Her ex was, I think, an actor or an extra on Insecure. And now Shanice bursts out in tears. I said, oh my gosh, if another person starts crying, I'm going to scream. So Alex says, hold on now, let's clear it up. I only knew about Shanice's mess because Nick brought the article to my attention. So he low key threw Nick under the bus. And the way Nick was so caught off guard, he was like, now damn, why am I in it? <laughs> so now you have Nick trying to clear his name and he brings up how Jasmine was also talking about the article too. I just said, child, again, I don't know why we're even talking about old mess anyway. But Shanice, when you started crying and saying how Alex traumatized you and you placed all the blame on him, let's stop for a minute, right? because you knew good and damn well that when you signed up to be on a reality TV show, that all of your skeletons would fall out the closet. Let us not sit up here and pretend like when you don't go on TV, all of your business becomes public. Your finances, tax issues, debt, bankruptcies, liens, arrests, DUIs, jail, mug shots. If your siblings were in some mess, their business is going to also be out for public consumption too. That's the risk you run trying to chase fame and a big check. Because even if Alex had not brought this up, it would have still come out anyway. But Shanice is still sobbing about how it's a legal issue and how her ex tried to leak her nudes and how he's trying to sue her for $20,000. And I said, girl, I wouldn't worry about that lawsuit. It'll probably be thrown out. And two, you don't have the money, so he won't be getting anything. So girl, don't even worry. You're good. And also, Shanice, if he leaked your nudes, that's revenge porn, and that's illegal. So you can actually sue him for money for leaking your nudes. So girl, stop crying and get a lawyer and sue him and get some money out of him. So Alex and Shanice hug it out and I foolishly thought that they could actually have a fun dinner. But no, there's more drama because Bria says that she has something to say. And I said, oh Lord, because I already know that Bria is about to drain all of us. So Bria says that she feels like she listens to everybody and she's a loyal friend and how her voice is not heard. And I said, time out. You have one of the biggest mouths of the cast. You're always running your mouth and yelling and carrying on about something. They have no choice but to listen to you whine and scream and holler about something when you're not getting your way. So Bria goes on to say that her mood has also shifted. I said, well, what's new? You always have mood swings. You're always in a bad mood. Somebody has always pissed you off. You're always upset about something just like Jordan. 
So nobody's surprised. It's just another day that ends in Y when you're upset. So she brings the BS about how she's not comfortable with Mariah coming to the house and she's been holding it in for all this time, but she's not okay with it. I just said, girl, please get out of our faces because you sat up on Campire's channel and said that you and Mariah were fine. So for you to switch up now is ridiculous and it's embarrassing and it's thirsty. And Jasmine was so over it. She said, girl, I don't even know what to say right now. I said, Jasmine, I'm right there with you. It's one of those situations where all you can do is laugh to keep from crying or cursing somebody out. <laughs> Jasmine had me gagged in her confessional. She says, I usually take things on the chin, but my mother is a brilliant and resilient two-time convicted felon. Please do not try me right now. I said, hold on, girl, what? Come again? Your mother is a two-time convicted felon? I need the story. Bravo, you better have a reunion because I need to hear. But Jasmine pretty much laid it out on the line like, Miss Girl, I am not the one. <laughs> so now things get tense and Jasmine's like, I hear you, but I'm frustrated right now. And I'm also allowed to get upset too. And I said, girl, I know that's right. Because the way Jordan and Bria dominate the conversations and make it all about them and how they feel, it's about time that you say, no, I'm pissed off too. So Jasmine is getting visibly upset. And she goes on to say that she feels bamboozled every day. So there's some back and forth between her and Bria. And you have Bria talking about, oh, well, Mariah Fs up my mental space. I just said, oh my gosh. Bria, you are just determined to be an asshole. You just want to be annoying because you know good and damn well that you don't have any real issue with Mariah. You can see that Amir doesn't really love confrontation because the way he got up and just went to the bar, he said, can I get nine shots for everybody? Like they need help. And then we see Jordan go to the bar with Amir. And I just said, now Jordan, the way that you always want everybody else to console you, why don't you come out and make sure that your friend is okay? Bria, I'm going to need you to stop getting loud and stop acting like you're about to fight somebody. Because when you stood up, I just said, girl, sit your narrow behind down, please. Like, I'm just so tired of it. And even Preston is tired of it because he said Bria is always standing up, screaming, talking loud, talking hood, like she's going to do something when she needs a grip with reality. And he was like, she needs that kind of grip, like the woman who put Gorilla Glue in her hair, like that. I said, please, Preston, whack Bria again because Bria is always testing everybody's patience. I'm just scoot on over and let you whack him. Get him again. Get him for me. Ah. Bria's rattling on about how hurt she is. And now Jasmine goes off. She says, I came into this house not knowing where I stood with damn near everybody in this house besides you and Alex. And at this point, Jasmine is sobbing too. You have everybody come around to console her. Summer's hugging her. Noelle's hugging her. And she's like, I need some fun and support from my friends. I'm going through a lot right now. Now, mind you, Jasmine has just revealed to the audience, but not her castmates, that she's pregnant. And she's going through a pregnancy, a friendship loss, and her husband is deployed. He's not with her. That's a lot. And now you have Bria picking on her about Mariah coming. That would send anybody over the edge. I felt bad for Jasmine. I said she had every right to go off because enough is enough. And it feels like they want to send her over the edge. It's just not right how they treat Jasmine. Jasmine is the nucleus of this group. She put this show together. So they need to give her some respect because if it had not been for her, would they even be on this show? And Bria, the audacity for you to walk over and try to give Jasmine a hug, I would have said, girl, get your effing hands off of me. You just yelled at me. You're talking all this BS about how you don't want my friend to come on the trip. Get away from me. And a quick side note, did anybody catch Preston ordering the octopus? Was it just me or did that octopus look like it was still alive? <laughs> but guys, the episode ends with a to be continued and we don't see a preview for what's next. So I am very excited to see what happens in episode five. But y'all, Summer House Martha's Vineyard is giving what the other girls were supposed to have gave. I'm loving this season. Now, I'm not going to beg y'all, 
but please watch and support the show because the ratings for this episode were horrible. They only garnered, I think, 284,000 viewers. That's terrible. Those numbers lead to cancellation. So if we could just tell a friend to tell a friend to watch the show on Sunday night, that would be great because I would hate to see them be canceled. I really would. They have so much potential. It's a fun watch. The drama is just right. It's not too heavy. It's not too toxic. So let's keep supporting Summer House Martha's Vineyard. I want to see them go far. I want to see them at BravoCon in 2025. And I want to see them get paid and get these checks because we know that Bravo does not start paying you real money until season three, season four. So let's keep watching, let's keep supporting, and Bravo, let's also do a better job with promoting the show. But guys, that was my recap. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all later. Bye.